The armorer and a group of Mandalorians hold a ceremony to induct a young child into the tribe. The ceremony is interrupted when an aquatic monster attacks the Mandalorians. They fight back, but are soon overpowered. Din Djarin arrives, killing the creature with his starfighter and revealing that Grogu has chosen to stay with him. The armorer confirms that if the minds of Mandalore still exist, Djarin may become a Mandalorian once more. Jarin travels to Navarro to meet Grief Karga, who is now the High Magistrate. Jarin helps Karga stop a group of pirates who have been attacking citizens and schools on Navarro. Cargo offers Jarin the newly vacated position of Marshal, but Jarin refuses, stating that he came to rebuild IG-11. Jarin successfully revives IG-11, but the droid defaults to his original violent programming. Jaren brings his parts to a group of Anzellan mechanics who tell him that they need a new memory core to fully repair the droid. As Jaren leaves Navarro, the pirate crew attacks his ship, but he destroys several of their fighters and escapes. Jaren meets with Bo-Katan in an old Mandalorian castle, who reveals that after losing the Darksaber, she has abandoned her plans to reclaim Mandalore and suggests that Jaren should travel there alone. Thanks for stopping by the Search T channel. I am Search T, and that is the synopsis of Season 3, Episode 1 of The Mandalorian is entitled Chapter 17, The Apostate. And that is the status of Din Djarin, whom you know as the Mandalorian, he's no longer a Mandalorian according to the armor, but there is a way, the way, right? There is, that is the way, as they say, and he needs to cleanse himself and he needs to find these, uh, what's that, what you call those, uh, nice, the minds of Mandalore, cleanse himself there. And he has to prove to the armor that he has and he may be restored once again to a Mandalorian. There's some takeaways and some callbacks that I noticed in this episode. I enjoyed the episode. First off, let's start with Grogu. Grogu, he is such a fun loving little guy. It's so funny when you see the things that he does and what we, I don't know, I guess can take for granted, but something that as simple as spinning in a chair and he's taking pleasure in it. In that office of Ricarga, who is the high magistrate now, he's using the force to spin the chair around. And at first I'm going... Who's spinning the chair? But then you see him going this with his hand. You know, he's going go like this, you know. And there's that one also scene where he uses the force to get a little... They're calling it chocolate in some of the explanations. It's coming to comments out there. But it could be a little peanut. It could be a little walnut or something. But it's just he's just chilling and he's just having fun while serious talk is happening between... Karga and uh, Jaren. And then, speaking of Grief Karga and the Mandalorian, when they first see each other, while well, you hear, you know, Grief Karga yell out his name Mando, and then they do a, uh, like a handshake, or they come together and, you know, they go like this, you know? And it's like a don't know if they inadvertently did this 
did he meant it or it was just something that just was like not planned but you can kind of do a callback to Predator when he and Arnold Schwarzenegger did that and they called it the muscle what do they call that the muscle um, scene or something where when they do that and then you see up close of both uh, Carl Weathers and Arnold Schwarzenegger but you see mostly Arnold Schwarzenegger's bicep uh, classic scene everybody uh, loves that movie Predator is probably one of the best um, films of its kind and one of his uh, signature roles he played a guy named uh, Dylan and who can forget the way he died in that uh, movie well, almost all of them did I think all of them did except for uh, except for Arnold but of course he's a star why would he die and then um, there's also the white uh, protocol droid that we see when Mando and Gragu, you know, land. And you see it walking around. And I didn't notice it, you know, because I'm just looking at everything, just like what um, Din Djarin and, uh, and Gra Grogu were doing. They're like taking the sights as well. And then I, I watched a video and it actually says that that is a the same type of protocol droid from the empire strikes back you kind of see him known as kp 3 and you see him at times just as a, in a backdrop he's not even you know he's not even alive or or walking around or anything he's just laying there especially after he was of casualty and during the uh, during the uh, Empire Strikes Back, but then you see him at one point and he's doing something, working on a map or something like that. You see him, and that was a call back to Empire Strikes Back. Is he the same droid? I mean, this is after the Empire Strikes Back and everything, but it could easily be one. They always are able to reprogram those uh, droids, right? So there's that. And then there was an explanation of uh, what happened to, you know, um, Cara Dune, who was of course played by Gina Carano, and. I don't know in regards to the situation and why she was fired from I mean I know don't don't call me out I know why because of things that she said but hasn't there been just as bad of a thing being said by other celebrities and other athletes and all that stuff and nothing happens to them you know she was a key character in this series she was even going to get a spin-off but she's not here she's not in the the series she's not in this season i believe not if they bring her back it's going to be a recasted probably i don't know if they're going to go through with the with the spin-off it might be a, with someone else but when it was brought up You know, by Din Djarin. And then uh, Karga says that after she brought in Moff Gideon, we remember that, she was recruited by special forces. And that's all the explanation that we get. I guess it's good enough. I guess they mentioned her. They're not gonna, they didn't kill her off. You know, we can all speculate on who would be the one to replace uh, Gina Carano. You know who's going to replace her you got a lot of great actresses out there a lot of uh talented ones that what as that they could easily fill her, her shoes to see what happens with that in the future but i really really uh enjoyed this episode there's a lot of things to take in love the duel almost like an old west type of duel between karga mandalorian versus uh the pirates you know and we all know that uh, 
The Mandalorian has a quick uh, quick draw, right? Can shoot you where you stand. But Grief Karga, he's no push, he's no slouch either. I mean, just because he's the high magistrate and everything like that doesn't mean he's lost his touch or lost his ability to be quick on the draw. And then later on, you see the Mandalorian along with Drogu, and the pirates are after them. And what happens? He ends up taking them out and disappears. He, you know, shoots off and, you know, so he, you know, he uh, loses them. He loses uh, those guys and it's really, really a, a great uh, scene. I liked it. How about the uh, sea creature? When uh, the armor is, uh, I guess you could say, inducting a young child uh, into the tribe. And it comes out, and they're holding their own. I love when uh, you see the the Mandalorians, and they're, you know, with their jetpacks, and they're floating above the creature, and then they're putting, I guess you call detonators or those bombs, or what do you want to call those things, detonating them. It doesn't even bother the uh, or even to penetrate the the uh, creature, right? And then in comes Din Djarin, in comes the Mandalorian, and he. With one blast of his, you know, of his starfighter. And he takes him out and then we see him uh, there. And then all of a sudden in that little capsule up pops uh, Grogu. Those of you who uh, watched the um, last three episodes of the Book of Boba Fett. It heavily featured uh, Grogu and um, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin. And so... That right there carries over. Um, a good thing that I watched the Book of Boba Fett because I probably wouldn't have understood. I wouldn't have. I would have been like, you know, well, you know, because I thought that he dropped him off and everything like that. But you see in that um, episode, you see in that seat in the part that part of the um, the series, you see how Luke is uh, training him, and then there's a decision. They even make a best car. We call it a best car vest. For the little guy, either take that or go with uh, Mando. Go with uh, Din Djarin, and he chooses to go with him. And we all know that that relationship between them is that's like father and son. I mean, Din Djarin really he does love the little guy. He loves Grogu. He even corrected, uh, you know, Reef Karga and said, uh, "No, his name is Grogu." And then. Grief Cargo's like, uh, okay, whatever you say. Okay, whatever, that's his name, okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's just like, and then he even, uh, going to the Grief Cargo now, he, 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 you know, he offers him, uh, uh, Cara Dune's, uh, old job. There in the city. And, you know, he just can't do that at the moment. You know, to be Marshall, but yet... No, you know, he has to, he wants to rebuild IG-11 because IG-11 for him, to him is a reliable partner, someone that can help him in his quest as he's going along. And that's going to show him the way, but it's like, he's somebody that he can rely on. But of course, we all remember in, uh, you know, what happened earlier in the uh, series, you know, he self-destructed himself and was able to destroy everything around him, all of whatever those enemies, whatever those, all those, uh, I guess those were those, what, those bounty hunters and all that stuff. I'm trying to remember a couple seasons back, you know, but he was able to he do that. And so he's nothing but a shell of himself. He's over there in the, this town square and he basically built him up so that he could be presentable. He's just like a representative of a hero to them, you know. And then when he does kind of put him back a little bit, and he's only half of his of his old self, right? No legs, just the top part. And he ends up going back to his old programming, which is to destroy the child, destroy Grogu. And so they had to put him down. Well, it wasn't them. It was actually Chief Karga's, uh, Reef Karga's uh, robot that dropped uh, something on the head of IG-11. And then they take him to... You know, these Anzillan mechanics, and they're like, it's a no-go. We can't do him. We can't fix him and stuff and then what about a new memory chip what about a new thing you know they, that, that. and they're like yeah yeah we can go get it and he says I'll, I'll go get it and there's that's that and then he goes to meet uh, Bo-Katan in the old Mandalorian castle 
And um, after the what happened with the last sub season, she lost the dark saber, and she really doesn't care about uh, reclaiming Mandalore. She just abandoned that that plan, and she suggests that uh, Jarin travel alone. And um, that's where we left off. That's where the episode ended. It's good to see uh, Carl Weathers back as Grief Karga. Love, love, love him as a actor and a character and a, what he's done in his career. You know, especially we all know him for Apollo Crews. I'm not Apollo Crews, that's the name of the wrestler. Apollo Creed and how his memory lives on in, in Creed, the films that now, you know, and stuff. His son, who's played by, uh, you know... What's his name? Now, that's another thing. I don't know why I'm zeroing out to other films, but you know, his memory lives on in Creed, and uh, you know. But then here we are with um, the Mandalorian. I enjoyed the episode. Uh, very, very well done. I'm just enjoying all these shows that I've been doing on my channel. I just finished uh, Andor. Very, very good. A very good uh, season. Uh, one, um, or not season one, but yeah, season one. Season one uh, finale leaves uh, left us on a cliffhanger. And I uh, don't know if this was much of a cliffhanger, but it did leave us with questions, you know. But uh, that's pretty much all I can say about uh, this episode. Like I said, great season premiere. Great episode. We were all uh, looking forward to it, for it, I should say. And um, let's see what happens um, in season two, episode two. Jesus, I'm tired. Just got home from work, but uh, let's uh, end this video before I start babbling and making no sense. Um, so uh, again, um, I enjoyed the episode titled "Chapter 17: The Apostate" from uh, *The Mandalorian* season three, and we're off and running, and I am enjoying it so far. So. Anyway, uh, that's my video. So for those of you who stopped by and uh, checked it out, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.